Hello friends, welcome. Today I'm going to be sharing how I approach improving in Dota 2. This is what worked for me to get from divine to immortal. It's what I recommend to anyone that asks me how do I go about improving in Dota. I've kind of given this advice in like bits and pieces here and there, but we're going to consolidate it all into one video and make a game plan to improve. Applicable to everyone, kids of all ages, carries, and support players. Now it can be summarized in these three points. First, you're going to focus on one role and a few heroes. You're going to work at improving those heroes and role. Don't worry about your win rate at this point. Just get good at those heroes. Because once you're good at those heroes, you can then work on improving at the game. And then after you're good at the game, you can then worry again about MMR. And I think this is just a lot faster um, in terms of improvement rather than just grinding out games. Now, if this is all you need, thank you for dropping by. You don't have to watch the rest of the video. But we're now going to go break down these points a little bit more and kind of give you a detailed plan and explanation on why we're doing what we're doing. So if you didn't watch yesterday's video, it looked like clickbait. I don't blame you, but it was actual content, I promise. The premise, and all you really need to know, is that simply grinding games is not a very effective method at improving. So throughout the course of this video, we are going to create a focused plan to improve so that we can speed up the process and not just keep playing the game again and again, hoping we're going to win MMR this time. We are going to secure the MMR by actively improving, and then the MMR will come with that. So it begins by having a hero puddle. You're going to play one role. I know for many of you, this might be a little hard. I myself really like a lot of the different roles, and I like a lot of the different heroes. So for a long time, I would play a lot of different things. Um, and you can improve a little bit like that and make your way up there. Again, that's why you can water it down. If that's how you want to play, it's okay. But if you really feel like you're stagnating, you really want to work on improving a bit faster, then I think you just have to play one role. It's okay. It doesn't mean you're going to be trapped in this role forever. So for example, this is my own, this is what Dota thinks of me as a player. I am a, a very good hard support player, a decent soft support player, and I'm garbage at everything else. And it's kind of true. It actually is. So apparently I'm an immortal, apparently I am an immortal hard support player, and I think I'm okay at four. I do think I'm garbage at these roles, but you know what? Just from what I've learned from being a good hard support player, naturally, I am decent at these other roles to some extent. So I would say I'm probably like a divine core player. Even though I never play core, I don't really play any of those heroes, I'm pretty sure I could just pick a hero and get by in like a divine game because I have improved at the game from playing hard support. I know what cores need to do. I know things that should happen in the game. By working at one role, I improved the other roles along the way. So if you like to play a lot of different things, that's okay. Like you're going to get to, but start with just one. And in that one role, I'm sorry, you're going to only play one hero at a time. Pick one main hero. You are going to pick a couple backups so that if your hero gets banned, you know, you don't like panic. Ah, oh, what do I do? You're going to have two backup heroes, and that's usually enough. It's pretty uncommon that all three get banned. But, you you know, if you really want, you can pick a fourth or fifth. Um, but we're going to play one hero. Why are we doing this? When you play a hero that you aren't familiar with, you focus on the hero. That's okay if you, like we're trying to learn a hero, then that's what we need to do. But if you're trying to improve, that means you need to get better at the hero and the game. And the reason many people stagnate is because they keep playing different heroes and they aren't improving at the game because they're just focused on the hero. This is why we need to play one hero. We're going to get good with that hero. And as that hero starts to become ingrained in our muscle memory, we don't have to like think, what, what item do I need? Like, how's this matchup going to go? I just, I just know. I have experience. I know I'm going to win this game. Um, or I'm going to do well in this lane, but the game's going to be hard. How can I itemize towards that? You have to think about that. But after a while, it just becomes second nature. And then you can start thinking, hey, what's happening in the bottom lane? I have time. You know, I'm not panicking about last hits. I'm very calm about this. I have time to go check bottom lane. You're improving your map awareness. 
You can start thinking about the matchups as a whole. How's your carry going to do against their carry? Do I need to help them? Do I need to buy something? Like, I used to just focus on myself, but now maybe I can sneak in an item for uh, my carry and help them out, like a uh, Solar Crest on a Kunkka mid. You start to be able to play the game. You start to realize what objectives you're supposed to push, things like that. And you can't really do that if you're always worried about what hero you are playing. And don't worry. Just like the playing one role, you aren't going to be a one hero spammer forever. For a while, you are going to be. You know, I recommend, I mean, as much as you're willing, honestly, um, as much improvement as you want, keep playing the one hero. But, you know, at least like 30 to 50 games, I think. I know that number sounds crazy to some of you. And then to others, you're like, oh, yeah, that's easy. It's funny how different people are. But really, try it. If you've never tried it before, try it. You're going to spam one hero consistently. And it's okay, because playing one hero will passively improve the other heroes just like that role. Let's take uh, Lich, for example. You spam Lich. Great, you're a Lich spammer. I don't know how you do it. But you do it, and then now you decide, I'm done with Lich. I want to play someone else. You pick Disruptor. They are different heroes. But some is going to carry over. So from playing Lich so much, I became a better support player. Your warding is better. You understand itemization better. That's going to carry over to Disruptor. Great. But what are some things from the hero that can carry over specifically? Well, Lich is a bit of a lane bully focused around spamming out his Q a bit. Or at least that's like one way you can play the lane. And Disruptor can play the lane in a very similar way. The, the spells are a little different. How you're going to go about it is a little different. But there is that overlap. So even if you've never played Disruptor before, you're already a step ahead than what you would have been blindly picking before because you have played Lich and there is some of what Lich does that carries over to Disruptor. And then you're going to have to learn some new stuff as well that is specific to Disruptor, but that's okay. It's still this jump start at playing a hero. Um, so start with one role, start with one hero. Let me show you how this might look in the, uh, the client. So... I was a Jakiro spammer. I spammed him from Divine to Immortal. Treant was my backup. I don't remember the third. We'll just say Crystal Maiden. Now from here, I just, every game, I pick Jakiro. I work on him. I learn the nuances. I get really good at him. Eventually, you get, you get bored. So we'll throw Jakiro over into our hero pool. After we have learned the nuances, after we've become really good with the hero, now he's in the hero pool. Let's get him out of here. Need a new backup hero. Let's say a uh, Lich. Now we do the same process. I become a treant spammer, work on that, learn the nuances, blah, 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 get bored. Move it over here. I decide I want to learn Grimstroke, repeat the process. When you decide, I'm done with that, I don't want to, don't want to learn any more heroes, I like the ones I've learned, it's time to win MMR, now you're going to pick from your hero pool. These are your best heroes, the ones you've practiced a ton, you're very familiar with their matchups, what you're supposed to do, you've learned how to play them in the game. You don't have to focus on the hero. You can think about the game. These are who you pick to win. Now, if you want to balance it out, still improve some, still uh, win some MMR, you can mainly pick Grimstroke. But if you identify this would be a really good Jakiro game, now you're free to pick Jakiro. Even if you haven't played him for a while, you've been spamming Grimstroke a little bit, you're a little out of touch with Jakiro, you might miss a spell here or there, but it'll quickly come back to you because of how much experience you had with the hero. This is a little easier for support players, I'll admit, because we first phase pick and like that's it. For core players, I understand if you feel a little timid about, well, am I just going to pick anti-mage? Like there are some really bad anti-mage games. Yes, that's kind of the point. You're probably going to lose some of those anti-mage games. My bad, sorry. But it's part of the learning process. You want to learn how to play anti-mage into bad matchups as well. You know why? An average player is about 50% win rate. They win games they're supposed to and lose games they're supposed to. Like, they just perform. They win games where they do well and they lose games where they do badly and they don't know how to do anything different. A good player always wins games that they're supposed to win, but... They sometimes win games that they're supposed to lose just by being a really good player or really good at that hero. And that is how we significantly shift the win rate. We take losses and turn them into wins. The only way you can do that is if you're really good at a hero and understand those counter matchups. So when you feel comfortable first picking a hero and you like do not care what, they, what the enemy picks, 
That to me is when they are hero pool ready. Again, a little easier for supports. For cores, I understand you might still not want to pick into really bad matchups, but do it a couple times, really learn it, decide, wow, that was awful. I will never pick that again. And now you know. Now you know for the future, you'll always avoid those matchups. But you'll also learn which ones, wow, I thought this was bad, but actually, you know, here is my timing window. I can win this way. This is what I need to do. That is how you become a really good player and you really shift your win rate and gain all the MMR when you decide that's what you want to do. After you pick your one hero, you're not going to just jump into ranked games quite yet. We have to do a little bit of prep work first, some homework. First, read the Dota wiki for your hero. There's a lot of good information there. You don't have to read like everything, but at least read the abilities. There's a lot of detailed information that honestly is kind of better than the client and other resources. Shout out to everyone that works on the wiki. It is an incredible resource. Familiarize yourself with the info there, at least on the hero you're going to spam. I recommend doing this for at least your main hero. If you want to do it for your backup heroes too, that's fine. But remember, we only really care about the main hero at any given time that we're working on improving. So if you like insist on playing like three heroes, then you're going to have to do this for three heroes, but it's going to be more work. So like, that's why like one hero is a little easier to do. First things first, head into an empty lobby, practice your last hitting. I don't care if you're a core or a support, everyone needs to be able to last hit. When you get the chance to get last hits, you better get last hits. Go into an empty lobby. You can do the uh, last hit trainer if you want, whatever. Don't buy items, just last hit. Then you can buy like some small items if you want, things that you naturally would, like a Quelling Blade if you're a core melee hero, stuff like that. But just, just be good at last hitting, okay? Everyone needs to do this. I don't care who you are. You have to be good at last hitting. Then open up a bot game. Last hit against some insane bots. You can go into the mid lane if you want. Honestly, it's okay to go to a side lane as well. You're gonna contest the enemy two bots and whatever bot is on your team, because they're going to go for last hits as well. And just practice last hitting a bit um, against some competition. So it's not like this, you know, easy empty lane. It's okay that real players are probably better than bots, right? That's fine. Doing this is like, this is not to make you like this immortal tier player. It's just to get you ready and prepped to play the hero in a real environment. And so against bots, like it's fine. It's just to give you a bit of competition and to get your timings a little cleaner than what you need to do against an empty lobby and then practice any combos so you're like a, a wind ranger who might pick up an ironwood tree and practice shackling and planting an ironwood tree behind them if you are playing someone like lena practice yulesing the target and then landing a uh, lsa stun if you're invoker practice like the 50 million combos you need to do any combo your hero might possibly do you should practice it you should also spend a little bit of time theory crafting a little on how to get the most out of each spell. How much damage do you get from all your different spells? Maybe you could just find some guides that kind of help you with that, but you can think of it on your own. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I did do a video with Alexander Kocha and we broke down Crystal Maiden spells. How to think about each one, how you might use them in the lane, that sort of thing. But you can do it with any hero. Just look at the spell, read the description and think. Okay, how do I get the most out of this damage? How do I get the most out of this attack speed? When should I use this spell? Plan it a bit ahead so you can save time and you're not just randomly using spells in the, in the game. You have a plan for what each spell is supposed to do. That'll help with your mana management, your effectiveness with the hero. All of that leads to having a good win rate and just playing well in general. Then another way to inform your decisions on that is to just watch some high level replays five is a bit of an arbitrary number but really do more than one do a couple you don't have to do them all at once watch like one or two maybe three play a little bit watch another couple more the point is you at least want to watch some it just helps okay even if you have no idea what you're looking for just watch what they do see how they position take note of their starting items what do they build later? What are their talent choices? What are their skill build order? You know, did they do any cool tricks? Oh, I saw him like do this double stack with a spell. That was nifty. Or I saw him get a kill using this combo. I didn't, I'd never thought of that. You know, you can learn a lot of nifty tricks just by checking out some of these replays. And then 
the game changes. So it never hurts to go back. So like that's something I'm a little guilty of. I get a little <laughs> a little arrogant. Oh, I'm such a good Jakiro player. I really should go and see how other people are playing Jakiro and see if anyone else has done something cool with the hero, something I never thought of, that sort of thing. It's important to stay up to date, um, not just to, when you begin a hero, like learn how they're good, but then, you know, keep up with how other people are playing that hero. With all of this information, you should plan a generic build. It's okay to copy from some of the replays you did, but kind of tell yourself why you're doing it. Here's my starting items. Why did I get these? These help me last hit. These give me some survivability. Okay, so you get this basic plan. You know, later on, I'm going to build Javelin into MKB, something like that. It's fine to start with a cookie cutter build. That'll be your basis to compare other builds to later. So after you get used to that default build, you decide, oh, well, maybe I want to try shifting in this item. Um, this will help me farm, help my mana, whatever. Now you buy that, see how it feels compared to your usual build. And you decide, eh, the other build felt a little better. Okay, we tried, we learned, that's fine. Maybe decide, wow, okay, yeah, this uh, felt really good, but then I lost these couple games. So what was the difference? Now you're learning a bit more nuanced. Oh, I could get away with this item against these heroes, but against these other heroes, they kind of punished me for trying to be greedy. This is how we learn. But it starts with a generic plan. If you just like to think things through, I think that's fine. But if you like to write things down, I think that's great. So here's something we put together for Alex. He decided he wanted to be an offlane player. He was going to work on wind ranger so i am not an offlane or wind ranger player but i could still follow the guide i've laid out for you guys i looked at high level games i watched the replays i took some notes and we kind of wrote the stuff out uh, for him so we came up with a default starting item build that he'll start with one variation that maybe if the lane looks a little dangerous he could try as well the game plan kind of straightforward for wind ranger other heroes might be a bit more complex but hers was like her dar farm the uh javelin into mkb this was before the patch um but still even if it's simple like just setting it down in stone makes it a little easier it just removes a bit of stress from yourself because you know this is what i'm going to try to do not every game maybe but at least to start this is what i'm trying to do and i'll learn to adapt from there now as he tried to play wind ranger we added a bit to it so we started coming up with some late game choices because he realized okay i i farmed up to mkb and actually i wasn't sure after that so we started to give him some options. Um, as I saw him do things, I gave him some ideas to try. I noticed he was using Power Shot a little randomly. So I said, hey, why not try to only use it for the range creep for now? Because you're running out of mana in lane. So only use Power Shot to secure the range creep and try to harass at the same time. Something disciplined like that is a great starting point because you'll start to realize, oh, when I do that, I actually still have a bit more mana. So now I can sneak in one or two more Power Shots for harass. But you would never have known that if you didn't start somewhere. So I really like the idea of having something written out and you can add to it. But I, I'll admit, I'm a little lazy. I don't write mine out either. But I do have it in my head, guys. So if you're someone who can just remember this stuff, go for it. But, you know, I think it's fine to write. And look at this. Look how much. These were just like quick notes. And it's already like once, two pages. You think you can just like memorize this stuff quickly? No. So if you pl try to play like 12 heroes at once, you got like all these pages written out. It's going to be disaster. And that's why we just do one hero at a time. We can refer to the game plan the first few games. But after a while, it's going to just become natural to us. It becomes ingrained. You don't have to refer to this anymore. And that's when you get to move it to the hero pool. And you start building up another page or two for your next hero. Ingrain that, repeat, and so forth. So after doing your homework, it's time to finally play, play the game crazy. You are going to queue up, maybe ban whoever you want, and then pick your main hero. I really think it is valuable to keep picking the hero as much as you can. For example, here is uh, some Grimstroke stats for you. This is when I was just playing Grimstroke like once a month, every now and then. Um, you know, I'd play him, I'd lose him, and be like, yeah, time to go back to someone else. And then recently, I've been playing him fairly consistently. Now, I will admit the recent patch did buff him, so like that could uh, be part of why I started winning again. But I am a firm believer that playing a hero consecutively makes it easier to focus on improving the hero, and then you become second nature with the hero, and then you can focus at playing the game. Um, and I think that's why I'm able to win more when I keep playing the same hero. I'm not just improving at the hero, but I then like I also win. It's kind of it's kind of nice. I'm doing both at the same time.
after you pick your hero, you're going to do your best. This is pretty straightforward. It's pretty honest. You know, like, just do your best. That's it. Don't tilt out. Don't rage. Nothing like that. Just try your best at this new hero. You will probably lose a lot. Look, I, I lost a bunch with a Grimstroke. It's okay. Coddle, my record right now is 2-18. and 18, Okay? Let that uh, sink in. I am terrible with a hero. But to improve it, you have to get past that. You have to keep playing the hero. Um, you know, don't just, like, grind it out. If you, like, play, like, five games, you lose them all. Okay, like, something's probably going wrong. Let's figure out what it is. So for me, Coddle, I clearly have some kind of misunderstanding if I've lost that many games. So I need to go watch some replays, see what they're doing that I'm not doing. And then, okay, I've identified something I'll try. Um, now I'll go try that. We try it a bit, maybe another five games. If we lose all of those, okay, I must be missing something else. It's just this trial and error process, you know? Don't let the uh, losses push you away from a hero. Don't make it uh, feel like, oh, I this hero's bad or I'm never going to learn this hero. Losing is part of the process. It's okay. After every game, you're going to do a couple different things. First, you're going to attempt to explain why the game uh, went the way it did. Explain the results. You don't have to be right, but just try. When you start off playing a new hero, you're probably going to focus on yourself a bit. Like, oh, I, I did this right, so this went uh, this way, and so forth, so on. Or like, oh, I kind of fed in the beginning, and it made the lane bad, and from the bad lane, we never recovered. That's okay. Focus on yourself at the start. After you uh, get used to the hero a bit, start thinking in a bigger sense. So, hmm, without like flaming mid, but like mid lost pretty badly. Then the enemy mid kind of took control of the game and it made it very difficult. Um, you know, in a way that isn't just like blaming and uh, pushing attention away from yourself, just try to objectively understand the game. And when you're not so focused on your hero, it's easier to do that. And you're gonna pick out something you learned something you need to improve, and you can go ahead and pat yourself on the back. Hey, I secured that range creep against that uh, high damage offlaner. That means my timing is a little better than theirs. Way to go, champ! You know, it's good to have some positivity amongst this. But also picking out something you learn and need to improve, that'll help you keep focused on improving at the uh, the hero and the game. Because maybe it's like, oh, my... Uh, my combo timing is off. I should go practice that. But maybe it's something you learn in the game. Like, oh, I think I'm a little, I'm a little lost. You know, I, I now that I understand the hero, I realize like I don't know where I, I need to be actually. Now that's something about the game you've identified that you need to improve. That's great. And if you can't think of anything, you're like, I promise you, you didn't play flawlessly. So go watch that replay and find something to jot down here. You can write it out if you want. Um, but you don't have to. If you've watched the streams, I will just explain at the end of the game, like, here is my view of what happened and what I think I need to improve. I do this after every game. Um, if I lose a couple games, I take a break. And on that break, I'm probably thinking about those games and deciding, here's what I did wrong. Like, I, I really screwed that up. I should probably have uh, not done this. I Every single game I play, I identify things that should have gone better and should have gone, like, uh, or maybe things like like that did go well. I'm like, oh, you way to go, champ! You know, stuff like that. Um, but I think about every game, and I think it has helped me improve as I keep playing. And then you're just going to repeat this forever, as long as you, you know, you want to. So eventually you'll get tired of uh, playing the same hero. That's okay. You move it to the hero pool, move on. Or if you're, like, still okay playing the same hero, but you're feeling a bit tilted, a bit tired, you know, that's probably not the best time to try to play the game. Um, and if that's the case go ahead and try something else. Take a break. That's fine. It's healthy. Good to do. Don't uh, grind yourself away in this game. But you could also, you know, if you do want to, you can go practice something. You can watch some uh, educational content or replays, your own or like the, uh, the pros we talked about. Um, work on improving instead of just playing the game. Because if you're playing the game in a bad state, you're just likely to lose and like how much can you improve when you're upset you know have you ever gone to like school when you're in a bad mood like you don't pay attention to what the teacher's saying um but like when you're like you know a bit more positive it's easier to like pay attention in class and stuff so whether you're trying to win or improve if you're not in a good mindset tired stressed whatever like it's just not good for the process so do something else where your mentality like doesn't matter as much you know practicing Maybe it's not optimal. Like, maybe if you're in a better mindset, the practice would be more effective. But you know what? Even if you're practicing at a subpar rate, you're not hurting your MMR because you're not in a game. 
And like, it's still like improving a little bit and it might help you calm down. I don't know how you guys are, but you know, sitting in like last sitting in an empty lobby and hearing that nice gold noise, like kind of calms me down if I'm feeling a bit stressed. So try one of those. Now here's a couple mentality tips that I think will help along this journey. The first is that you suck. Just embrace it. Let that sink in a little bit. I am not good at Dota 2. It is a hard game. That's okay, guys. It really is. And we will improve. That's the whole point of this. But if you start this whole process like with arrogance, thinking like, it's not really my fault. I don't have that much to improve. It's usually my teammates. Like, you're just holding yourself back. It's no, it's no good. Just ditch that attitude. Tell yourself you suck, but you are going to try to improve. And that mentality will help a lot. Don't focus on the other players. Only focus on yourself. These two points go together. Now, that does not mean that you never think about what the your teammates are doing. Because, of course, they affect you. But you don't want to fixate them on them. So, like, say, for example, it's very a classic one. is the carry player saying, the support is not pulling. That is why I lose every game. It is okay to say, you know what? The support should probably pull here. If you can identify that, that's good. And if they're not doing that, of course, that hurts you. So what are your options? If you simply say, oh, my supports are so bad, oh, and then you keep trying to play the lane and you lose, honestly, I think that is your fault at that point. Yes, the support probably should have pulled, but they didn't. And you decided to just keep doing the same thing. That doesn't make any sense either. That is also the wrong decision. So it's okay to identify, you know what, my teammate probably should have done this pull. This is a learning opportunity for you. You now get to say, okay, is it so important for them to pull? Like, can I keep playing the lane when they don't pull? You can try that and you find you lose. What does that mean? That means that pulling at that particular scenario was really important to do. It was necessary to play the game. Go do the pull. Even if you are a core player, walk over there and do the pull. No, that's my support's job. Wrong. Right. But it was a job that needed to happen to be able to win this game. The support probably should have been the one to do it optimally. But if they don't do it, it is still a job that must be done. And if you choose not to do it, you are just as much at fault. So go do that job that needs to be done. Congratulations, you have just improved at Dota. You have identified something that must happen. And if a teammate does not do it, you must do it. That is Dota. Yes, some heroes are more optimal for certain jobs. But at the end of the day, some jobs need to get done, some don't. If you only fixate and blame other players, like, you just leave it at that. But if you can identify, they screwed this up, is this a job that must get done? It is. I, I should go do it. I'll go do it. Eventually, you'll do it. You'll win more games that way. You'll improve. Your teammates will start doing those jobs. And then you can go back to improving, like, the stuff that you were supposed to do. But this can be a learning experience. It doesn't have to be, like, flaming other teammates. Just identify it objectively and then bring it back to yourself. Okay, they messed up. How does this affect me? What do I need to do from here? That is how we improve instead of just flaming. Any game that isn't on your main role, you know, maybe you're doing a role queue, you, you run out of tokens, you gotta go queue up them all up and you play something different. It's okay. Even if it hurts your MMR a bit, like it will, don't worry about it. It's a loss. That's it. If it's not your main hero, it's not your main role, the game is a loss. Just accept it right off the bat, and you'll feel better. I promise you. Um, instead of thinking like, oh, maybe like this is going to be worrisome, like I have to play this role. Well, we'll see. Just accept, you know what, this, I'm going into this game, and it's a loss. And that's okay. Losing is part of the process. We kind of mentioned that earlier. But since you're going to go ahead and lose the game, there's a couple things you can do. Just try to learn anything so if you're playing a different role you know what this is a great chance to get a bit of experience in the mid lane i'll can i'll get a bit of a feel for like what the mid laner wants to do that will help me as a player i know i'm going to lose this game it's okay i am improving later when i play my main role my main hero i will win this mmr back and i'll be a better player for it because i will remember hey when i was mid i wanted to do this I can, like, as a support player, I can go help my mid player do that. 
it helps you, your win rate's even better now. Experiment with something new. You know, maybe you are playing your main hero, but the game looks like it's going to be a loss. You have someone that, like, tilted out. Just try something new. The game's already, <laughs> the game's a loss. There's nothing, like, there's no downside to this. Go try cutting waves extremely aggressively. Who cares if you feed 10 times? Just try it. The game was over. It doesn't matter. And you might find out, wow, you know, I, like, they were supposed to end the game there, but because I was aggressively cutting waves, I stalled them out for, like, three minutes. You may still lose the game, but that is something worth knowing in another game. Or you might find out, you might actually win by doing something crazy. You might actually win a game because you throw them off, and then that's cool. You just win a game for free, but you probably learn something as well. I cut these waves. I stayed a little too long. I fed here. Next time, I should let one wave go by when I don't see the enemy heroes or something. I'll wait a little bit in these trees, and then I'll cut the next wave. We are learning something from a loss. If you only worry about the plus 30, minus 30 MMR, like wins and losses, it becomes like very mundane and it feels very bad to lose losses. That's why when we are in this improvement mindset, we aren't thinking about those. We're thinking about what we can learn from every game. And, you know, when we can win, we want the MMR, but when it's going to be a loss, get something out of that loss. Learn something. I have a little picture of my conduct summary, not to, like, flex on you guys, but if you are a flamer, um, that could be something you can work on. Um, not just, like, a PMA mentality, but, like, I generally think, like, if you are raging at your teammates too much, like, it's going to affect your conduct summary, but also it's going to make it harder to improve. So, like, you know, if you're not there, like, Try to relax a bit, guys. It's a game. Have fun, you know? Um, I think it's very easy to sit at a 10K behavior score. And it also, like, if you can, ha like, be well-mannered to have a 10K behavior score, I think it's then easier to improve as well. And now for a couple general improvement tips for you guys. First, read the Dota 2 wiki mechanics. Head to the Dota 2 wiki. This is the icon. Click it. Find some mechanics that you may think you know. Click it. Rush through it. Okay, you did know it. Great. Find something that you you realize, wow, I, I have no idea how armor works. Click it. Read it. Find out there are different armor types. Did you know that? If you didn't, go click those mechanics. Go read up on it. Do this just in your spare time. You can dedicate time to it if you want, or just, like, do it randomly. Either's fine. You know, if you're sitting on the, the toilet, you're, you're in a Zoom meeting nowadays, you're bored, read up on some mechanics. <laughs> Maybe don't do the last one, guys. I shouldn't, I shouldn't encourage that, but... Theoretically, if you have time, read the Dota 2 mechanics. It's kind of uh, good to know some of these. You know, how does tower aggro work? That shit's hard. Look it up. Read it. Still won't understand it. I don't understand it, but try. You'll forget some of these. It's okay. Go back. Brush it up. Really, the Dota wiki's incredible, guys. Read through some of this stuff. Next is a tip for when you're experimenting. This is a... Uh, I don't, I don't even know. This is like a philosophy thing. But I think it's really good to have a scientific method approach to experimenting in Dota 2. You're going to actively pose a hypothesis. Then you're going to try it. And then you're going to explain the results. And I think this active component, the before and after, is really good to help cement things into your memory. Um, rather than just like kind of like playing the game and you're like, oh, that was bad. But then you kind of forget it. And the next time like it happens again, you're like, oh, you know what? I, I did this before, wasn't it? It was bad. I think um, coming up with a hypothesis, uh, you might have seen me do this on stream if you watch me play. So I'll say something like, uh, I think stacking the large camp here is bad. And then I do it anyways. My hypothesis is that stacking the large camp is bad and you can assign a reason to it because the enemy offlaner can farm this hard camp. We do it. And then we see what happens, and we explain it. Stack it, the enemy farms it, and I go, huh, yeah, it was bad. The enemy farmed the stacked camp because they can do that easily, and then with that advantage, they killed us, and we lost lane. <laughs> it was bad. I will really remember that now. But sometimes it works out, and you had a hypothesis. You're like, I think it's bad. But then we're actually crushing the off lane, And because of that, they aren't able to make use of the stacked camp, and then I use that stacked camp to pull, which kills off the entire wave, and it ends up being good. And then I can explain, okay, you know, usually this was bad, 
But this time, when we were crushing the enemy, I was able to turn this into an advantage. It's not something I want to do every time, but there are situations where I could do it. This kind of like scientific approach, I think is really good to do when you're improving, not when you're trying to win. You know, like if you're focused on the win rate, then like, okay, I think it's bad. I'm not going to do it, right? We stick to what we know. But then when we improve, we may know that it's probably bad, but let's just make sure, you know, I, I don't care if I win or lose this. So let's, let's just make sure that it's bad. And you do it and you find out, okay, yeah, it was bad, but maybe it's good sometimes. And that's, that's uh, important to the process, I think. It makes you a better player in the long run. And that's it, guys. You are now ready to make the climb up to Immortal. But really, like, <laughs> this is what I did all the way up to Immortal. So, I mean, there you go. Uh, to summarize it all in a way that doesn't just repeat everything we said, I think there is something very freeing about doing this at least once, reaching some point, like Legend 5 Nature's Prophet, and then you know I am a Legend 5 Nature's Prophet player. And if you, you get tired of spamming it out, it was a lot of work, right? You play some other heroes, you drop a bit, or maybe you decided to learn Underlord, you dropped a bit. You lose some MMR, you're down to Legend 3. And it doesn't feel so bad. Because actually, you know, if I want Legend 5 back, I will just play some Nature's Prophet. I already did all the annoying homework that Zach gave me. I, I, I went through the losing process. I learned the hero. I'm just a good Nature's Prophet player now. And I just... I will win these games back because I, I did it once before and I can do it again. And to me, that was very freeing. It gave me a lot of confidence to have this like one hero I could always fall back on. And, you know, maybe you spend the time to learn like Underlord that drops you a bit. You can like, well, I'm in an easier game. Let me work on Underlord. You get back up to Legend 5. Now I know I'm a Legend 5 Underlord and Nature's Prophet player. Um, and then just repeat as you see fit. The process just becomes a little easier. And having that, like, freedom and confidence, um, not being so worried about losing MMR or, like, losing your rank, because you, in the back of your mind, you always know, I did it with this hero once, I will do it again. To me, that helped a lot. Um, made the game a lot less stressful, I'll tell you what. Um, so, like, right now, I'm on a break, because I <laughs> spammed it a lot, I'm tired. So I'm, I'm mixing it up now, I'm expanding my pool, and I feel fine losing some games, because I know, you know, I mix in a Jakiro game here and there to stay on top of my Jakiro game, and to win back some of the losses, um, so I don't drop too far. Um, but it, it feels good to always know I can go back to that hero. So give it a shot. Try it once. If you really hate it, I understand. Uh, there's other methods to improve in Dota. But I really, this is like what I recommend. My Zach, Zach approved. Um, five easy payments. Here's my one secret. Boosters hate me. That sort of deal. Um, give it a shot. Let me know. Uh, feel free to like post your progress and results in the uh, comments. You know, way to go. I did it. Um, you know, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it a lot. Good luck out there.